the talk around town and uh, in the minds and in the tongues of many Kenyans is is the current president William Samoy Arapruto trying to actually replace the gamer that is the Gikuyu, Embu, Meru and Akamba community with those gentlemen, our fellow countrymen from the Somalis. This is the question that has been begged due to the recent appointments to strategic offices from members of that community. Yes, indeed, they are Kenyans, but many are reading too much into it. Is it a political strategy or just Kenyans who are diligent in executing their duties and serving the nation? Well, that forms the basis of our conversation today on this yet another informative and insightful edition of CSA Brigade. I'm your truly son of the soil, Richard Mwenjin. And with me is this man donning the sheds, Vihiga's biggest export, Haman Von Manyora. Point of correction, these are not sheds, these are spectacles. These are spectacles? Correct. I see, I see, I see. All right. Yes. yes. Let's talk matters, uh, current trend in Kenyan politics, and quite a number of people have observed. We've seen recent strategic appointments in government being dished out to members from the northern community, particularly from the Somali descent. Aden Duali is in, the, in charge of defense. Nurdin Haji is still there uh, directing the office of the, of the ODPP. And a number of other people have got into government from that particular area. From a general standpoint, we've seen this was particularly a Raila stronghold in the previous elections. This time round, it was kind of split, but... Kenya Kwanza government has actually rushed in there and dangled some good, good carrots and tied in some <coughs> those leaders from that particular region. Is it much of a political strategy for 2027 or just these Kenyans who are really good at serving the nation? We must first of all inform you and correct you. <laughs> Somalis are Kenyans. <laughs> so if Somalis get a job, uh, perhaps you can say the things people are saying, oh, they are getting more than their fair share. <laughs> I even had another one very interesting from a political scientist mm -hmm. saying the sovereign, sovereign citizen, mm -hmm. that certain sensitive things can only be given to sovereign citizen. I asked him, to what extent are Somalis not sovereign citizens? <laughs> he, he didn't give me a satisfactory answer. Uh -huh. Yeah, because these Somalis are Kenyans. In this particular context, the comparison is all made between the Gema members and actually those from Somali. So let's just bank in there. Let's start it here. We've seen development carrots being dangled to the northern eastern community in terms of wind power projects, high infrastructure that have been promised to get into those regions. Raila Odinga has been a former prime minister and actually has even been there in the coalition government and actually in the handshake government. Would you say that that's a front he really failed at leveraging on just to secure that basket for his future ambitions in politics beyond 2022? I think it's not a question of what Raila did or didn't do for the northeastern people. In fact, he created a whole ministry for them and gave them to run that ministry and they did a number of things for them and for the region as indeed he did for the other countries together with Kibaki. <laughs> I think it's more to do with the opportunistic nature of our politics. <laughs> we have not yet come to accept that the president is not a giver of things. We still see the president as a person to dispense goodies. So if you have a president in office who enhances that thinking. And I'm afraid the current president does, does seem to, to go in that direction. Because Kibaki got us from there. He told us, no, don't come to me to ask me for roads or for anything. These things feature in development plans, you know, long term, mid term, long term. Mm -hmm. And it's a question of budgeting. Mm -hmm. So why are you coming to ask me for anything? Kibaki tried so hard to get us from that. Uhuru, well, he didn't quite do it in the manner more he had done and the manner which Ruto is trying to do. But there was a bit of going back, but not as much. I'm afraid now we seem to be going full circle into the pre kibaki days, mm -hmm. where people seem to think by association with the president, then you get goodies. The same was thought about Kib Raila's association with Huru and Nyanza got a few things. So uh, that's why I'm saying Huru did a bit of that, but not so much. Uh, it looks like Ruto will, will be big on that approach to politics. Would you say now that that particular mindset that is currently prevailing in our, you know, political weather justifies the reason why we saw a mass exodus of northeastern leaders into Kenya Kwanzaa in the recent, just right after the elections? Yeah, you know, you know, you know I've told you, uh, politics is very opportunistic. Mm -hmm. Once you make people see that there is something to gain by coming your side, they will come. But these were people who were still with Raila even when he had no share in government, not as a DP, not as the president. Yes. Why are they now crossing over, right? That's what I'm telling you. The man in power today is enticing them. Uhuru wasn't playing that kind of politics. 
of trying to entice people to his side. I see. Kibaki discouraged it openly. Mm -hmm. You know, Kibaki, in the Grand Coalition government, had just about that, I don't know, I don't have the facts. Some people, you just say a man was speaking, and they jump on you, fact-checking. Sometimes I find it very cheap. PNU, that was Kibaki's party, <laughs> had almost a third of ODM's number. I'm just saying, mm -hmm. the number was really low compared to ODM. And the ODM even had a speaker. Marenda. But Kibaki never went out to entice. At only, at, the only time Kibaki went as a matter of survival, and it was not him, it was the mafia around him, is when immediately after the two or three government was formed and they kind of uh, uh, played Raila and refused to honor the MOU, LDP came in full swing and the Kibaki's government felt threatened. That's the only time with the help of mafia he was able to grab <laughs> Kanu MPs and put them in government. Kanu and Ford people and they put them in government. <laughs> you see. But throughout his reign, first and second term, he never wanted this idea of enticing members of parliament. I see. Uh Uhuru didn't certainly didn't do it. In fact he just warn his people. <laughs> but it appear like Ruto is is, is is playing politics in that direction. Interesting. Yeah. But then again, for Raila Odinga to counter the, the Ruto effect in northeastern uh, region and somewhat to resuscitate his gravitas in northern eastern politics, would you say that getting firmly in his camp the powerful combination of Abdi Kadir Mohamed, Farah Malim, and say Adan Kainan is huge enough or rather sufficient enough now to counter the wave of those governors who decamped and members of parliament they are in? These are three long term firebrands from the region. It's not uh, Abdi Kadir, Farah Malim, and Kainan, uh, Adam. Kainan and Mohamed to, to, to give Raila a list of life a in Kenyan politics. Uh -huh. In this case, the Northeastern province. It is not the Oparanyas and the rest of the people to give him a list of life in. <laughs> and it's not Mother Karua, PK, Munya to give Raila a list of life in Mount Kenya. So I'm saying. Where the politics of this country is and the way Ruto is playing politics. Mm -hmm. If Raila were to bank on these politicians to give him life, he will fail and he will fail miserably. Raila has only one option. Which is? To take his case to the people of Kenya. Grassroots level. Yeah, to take his case to the people of Kenya. So even Northeastern, is not, it, it may of, be of very little consequence mm -hmm. and value that Ruto has taken the leadership. Mm -hmm. So what Raila will need to do, if I was his advisor, so I will ask him to re-engineer himself, mm -hmm. eh, to be appealing to the people, mm -hmm. and to look at the issues facing this country, and take his case directly to the people. Mm -hmm. You can remain with the leaders, the so-called leaders, but if he took his case to the people, in much more the same way Ruto tried to do, almost mm -hmm. successfully, I should say. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Then again, for Raila Odinga, for his allies who actually never got the elective seats, sele select elective seats from that particular region, would it be subtle enough for him right now to somewhat solicit or bargain for them to get into strategic government position just so to keep them at bay and keep their patience as they wait for him to launch his next presidential bid? Do you think that's a path he can take right now? Because see, they are all in the cold. The politics of this country has been monetized <laughs> and corrupted. <laughs> so... If you want to go, if Raila were to play this politics in the traditional way, mm -hmm. he would not have the money to play in this game. The, the, the game has changed. It's been monetized to a level you cannot play without money. Raila has money? No, I don't think he has that kind of money to push, to put in this game. It's been corrupted in a way Raila cannot participate in that kind of game. So certainly, mm -hmm. he's likely to lose more of his people. You've seen weaklings, weak politicians from Western where scrolling on their be bellies, stampeding and going to scavenge. So, to the extent that most of these politicians will go and scavenge because they are scavengers and opportunists, mm -hmm. you cannot play that game using that route if you are Raila and succeed. So I repeat, the only way Raila can survive in the politics of Kenya today is to take his case to the Kenyan people. I see. There's no other way. He cannot compete with Ruto for the leaders of so-called leaders. He Ruto will sweep all of them out of their feet. All of them. Raila will remain isolated. All of them. You don't give them a year. Less than a year, they will have 
all run away from Raila and they'll be with Ruto. So Raila can only take this game to the people. And I think Raila is a master of that. And, and that's what I was saying, if I was Ruto. He doesn't have advisors like Manyora, which he hired me. I need a job now. I should hire me as an advisor. You should, you should. I will tell the president, mm -hmm. don't rob Raila of his leaders. The moment Raila looks around and he has nobody supporting him, he'll go to the people. He'll go and have the people behind his back. You'll regret. Better leave him with these people to give him a false sense of security. And security. Uh -huh. Political security. Uh -huh. But if you grab them, all of them, and he cannot play that kind of politics of grabbing leaders or retaining them by maybe doing one or two good things to them or playing rough here and there, you know, which he can't do. What he will do, he will let you have the leaders. But he will take his case to the Kenyan people. It will be risky for him. So right. if I have the advisor to Ruto, I'll tell him. Punguza speed ya kuchukua leaders wa raila wacha kaya na watu waki. Atulize boli. Yes. <laughs> you take them away from him, uh -huh. and he will go to the Kenyan people. Thousands behind his back. Oh. Raila is a darling of the people. He doesn't need to dish a shilling? No. Obai must. Raila is the only politician who can call for a national holiday. With organic and following, you mean? Of course, Raila's followers are organic. Raila, Raila has suicidal support, as, as Atoli says. If you, are, if you are a leader and you are saying, for me to show, for me to know you support me, I want people to, to do things, it's only Raila who can get that kind of support. <laughs> Standing in front of water people canons can and walk all from, that. People can walk from Mombasa to Nairobi to support Raila. That's organic following. I see. All right, let's wrap it at this. We've seen North and Eastern Kenyan politics, which is largely dominated by the Somali, uh, people from the Somali descent. It is rich in the Muslim vote. If you look at the just concluded general elections and you analyze the, the analytics therein, you will find that even in Mombasa, where the Muslims are majorly based, Ruto kind of, to the surprise of many, penetrated the region. Now, we are seeing leaders come from uh, Azimio, which was uh, Raila's stronghold, and joining Kenya Kwanzaa. If you're looking at the general standpoint of the Muslim vote and what can be dangled to Raila's back basket, should he, get for, should he actually go for the sixth bid with all factors held constant as they are right now? Do you think that's enough alarm for Raila to know that the Muslim vote is uh, gradually fading away from his reach? I would hesitate to see it as Muslim vote. <laughs> I will, I will look at it as the opportunistic Kenyan leaders, mm -hmm. whether they are Muslim or not, mm -hmm. who flock like flies where there is something that they think is food, despite what it might be. Mm -hmm. So that uh, Raila's appeal to the Muslim can still be safe for the time being. I see. Yeah. There you have it from the wise man himself, Aman, man, Aman Bon Manyora such a rich working repository on matters, knowledge in political uh, affairs and governance issues in this country. Of course, it's always inciting to have you uh, give us company in this uh, and every other edition of CESA Brigade, a show whereby we focus on governance issues in Kenya. Always a pleasure. Also remember to tune in to Business Glide, your weekly most comprehensive show on matters business. It's always a joy whenever you support this and any other show on this particular channel. Reach out to us for business. We can come and cover your NDA events, corporate events, and all sorts of events our red card is very much available, so reach us to us via email address that is displayed there on our YouTube channel. Also, you can reach Haman Manura directly. I know most of you have his contacts. Give us business. We'll definitely give you value for your money. I'm Richard Mwanja. Until next time, goodbye for now.